What's going on guys, this is Astrum Sensei and welcome back to my action RPG tutorial series. So in today's video we're actually gonna make the enemy chase the player while they're patrolling and when they don't see the player anymore they go back to patrolling and we're also gonna make them change their speed based on if they see the player or if they're just patrolling so when they're patrolling they're gonna be walking and when they chase the player they're gonna be running and in tomorrow's video we're actually gonna make them attack us so yeah let's get started but before we do that i actually wanted to special thank my precious patron for sponsoring my videos so yeah make sure to join him if you guys wanna get the project files and early access to the upcoming tutorials so yeah make sure to check out my patreon the link is in the description and also make sure to join my discord because it's very important to me like i'm trying to grow my discord server a bit so yeah let's get started right now the first thing we want to do after opening our project is going to the ai folder and the behavior tree so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually mix the both parts of the behavior tree that we made like the uh, enemy patrolling and the following chasing the player so we're gonna make them chase the player while patrolling like after they spot you while patrolling instead of you know taking random locations to go to then chasing the player so yeah this will be like a patrolling enemy that chases you and attacks you when it sees you so the first thing i did was actually rename my patrol path sequence to go to patrol path because just called sequence isn't very easy and then I got the follow player sequence and its tasks closer and I connected both to the first selector and after that you actually want to select the go to patrol path sequence and uh, right click on it and add a decorator because we want to let it know uh, when to stop patrolling and chase the player so change the blackboard key to can see player and the condition is is not set and the observer aborts to both because we wanted to abort everything and chase the player and next you want to go to your other sequence and select the can see player decorator and change the blackboard key to can see player i think this was a mistake i made a few videos ago i'm not sure or maybe i changed it and saved by accident so yeah make sure that is can see player because otherwise it won't work the enemy will just stop when they see you so make sure that one is corrected so yeah if you test it out now the enemy will actually patrol when they're not seeing you and when they see you they will actually follow you and uh, keep chasing you until they reach you so yeah that works now since we're making an rpg and not a stealth game i actually want them to go back to their patrolling when they stop seeing you instead of looking for you for a while before going back to their patrol path so yeah this is perfect for now what we want to change right now is we want to make them run after they see us so they walk around while they're patrolling and when they follow us or chase us they actually start running so we're gonna change the walking speed based on that so yeah we're gonna go to the behavior tree and what we want to do now is we actually want to create something called a service now a service is basically a line of code that you can add to your sequences it's almost like a task but you actually add it on your sequence it's kind of different so we're gonna create a new service by clicking on that one above and as you can see it takes you to your new service Next you want to right click and add an event called event receive activation. This basically starts when you activate your service so it's almost like a begin play and you want to get a reference to your AI controller which in our case is AI NPC and next you want to drag out the blue one and get your pawn which is called my pawn we created this variable in our ai npc then we're gonna get a reference to the character movement which is connected to our enemy blueprint so that way we're gonna get the walking speed so get the character movement and from it you want to drag out and set the max walk speed and the new max walk speed what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna promote it to a variable which will be called speed and we're gonna make it an editable variable so that we can edit it easily from the behavior tree so next we're gonna go out to the content browser and rename our service 
because it's kinda annoying when it's not renamed. So I renamed it enemy speed and I went back to the behavior tree and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna right click on our sequences and we're gonna add a service which is the enemy speed do it for both and then i actually went back to the bp enemy to check the max walk speed i've said there because i think that's that's a perfect walk speed for our zombie so i checked it i found out that it's 85 so i changed the speed variable from the service to 85 and the running speed to 300 so when they are not seeing us it's 85 and when they see us it's 300 so 300 is for when they start running and next you want to go out and test your game and as you can see it now works so he's seeing us he's chasing us and when we hide behind this cube he goes back to patrolling at a slow speed so right now it's perfect so now that we've set up our enemy chasing the player right now we're gonna end the video and we're gonna make them attack in the next video now i wanted to include it in this one but i just thought i would keep it simple and short this time i think the next video is gonna be like the almost the last behavior tree video for this while if you've enjoyed my tutorial make sure you hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and join my discord and check out my patreon so yeah guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.